Welcome back. Here we got another breakdown coming at you guys. This is a Blueprint FL. This is passage number five. It is a CP section. Okay, Blueprint, Kaplan, TPR, all those other uh, third-party FL exams. All right, they're known to be a little harder than AMC exams. And the reason why those companies do that, a little secret, the reason why they do that is because they want you to score low initially on the diagnostics so that you can look at it and be like, oh, I need help, you know? So, and also so they can see, so like you could see more of a jump in your scores. Okay, that's why they do that. They make it a little harder, but that's it's still good practice. It's very good practice. You know, you want to do the more hard passages. They're very good practice, okay? So I'm going to be breaking this down for you guys. You already know how it goes. Do this on your own first and then hear me break it down. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down, pause it whenever you need to. All right, pause it whenever you need to. Read that passage. This is question 24. Write down your answers. 25, 26, 27, 28, and that is it. Okay, so write them down. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to break it down, how to pick the best answer, where to highlight, all this stuff, so you guys can hit your target score, whatever it is in your head. Whatever your target score is, do this, what I tell you to do, and you're gonna hit it. All right, let us begin. The human digestive tract is fundamentally a long tube running right through the body with dedicated sections that are capable of digesting material put in at the proximal end and extracting any useful components from it, then expelling the waste products at the terminal end. Okay, cool. I already knew that. The small intestine, oh, the small intestine is a site where most of the chemical and mechanical digestion is carried out and where virtually all of the absorption of useful materials is carried out. So I'll highlight here and something that stuck out to me just in case I forgot. Okay, it's the small intestine. This is a site where most of this whole chemical and mechanical digestion is occurring, okay? The intestines also have a smooth muscle wall with two layers of muscle. This enables the generation of rhythmical contractions that force products of digestion through the intestine. All right. I mean, personally for me, I'm very, very good at, you know, anatomy and physiology. So I don't really need to highlight all these things. I mean, if it strikes out at you and if it's something that, you kind of need to highlight so you kind of remember it later on in the question or maybe just to make a mental note about it to help you you know go through this passage better then you can highlight but for me i i don't really need to highlight it all right so to allow for absorption and secretion to take place specialized zones known as macula communicans exist between the muscle cells okay i did not know this so i'm going to highlight this it stuck out on me what are the what are these macula communicans these directly connect the cytoplasm of two cells, which allows various molecules and ions to pass freely between cells. What do they do? They connect the cytoplasm, all right? You should know your junctions. You should know your tight junctions. You should know your desmosomes. You should know your gap junctions. You should know those are pretty high yield, okay? In the large intestine, these connections allow for the movement of ions and fluids, for example. If material is too solid, it cannot move fluidly and can result in blockage. To prevent this, chlorine ions are secreted into the lumen. Okay. Cations and water will trail the chloride ions into the lumen by passing through the intercellular space between the cells. All right. This is different than what we've seen before in many other passages because usually they go through the cell but intercellular, meaning the space between the cells. Whenever you see intra, that means within. Inter means like um, in between, okay, with one or more cells. So that's how water and cations flow into the lumen space. They follow the chloride, but through the intercellular, so like right between these cells right here. All right, this method of transport is in contrast to typical transcellular transport, like I just said, where the substances travel through the cell. All right. Sometimes, guys, when you're reading passages like I just did, you can kind of predict what they're going to say next. Okay, you kind of see what's going to happen. All right. If you can do that, that's good. Okay, you kind of want to get into the habit of doing that because that means you're getting right in that test maker's head. And if you get right in that test maker's head, guys, that's it. MCAT's yours. All right. 
Diseases of the intestines are often due to chronic inflammation, which can arise from imbalances in the regulation of fluids and solute movement. Elevated levels of enzymes like thymidine kinase are often used to predict the risk of cancer in the colon. Okay, so elevated thymidine kinase, risk of cancer in the colon. Cool. Pretty simple passage, guys. Not too hard. Everything's making sense here, okay? Lumen and basal lateral. Um, you guys should know what that means. All right, lumen. So this would be like in the tract here, you know, in the tube, in the large intestine tube. And here is not in the tube, okay? So let's go ahead to the questions, guys. You know, when you guys tell me that the MCAT is hard, I, I don't I don't believe you. I don't believe you. The MCAT is not hard. It's easy, guys. Trust me. Okay, you've been fed lies. It's easy. In which of the following cell processes does thymidine kinase most likely play a role? Okay. Let's use our sense here. Thymidine kinase. Thymidine. Thymine. That is a nucleotide. Nucleotides in DNA. Cool. Osmosis? No. Why would that play a role in osmosis? That makes no sense. All right. Mitosis? That could work. Okay. In mitosis, we have, you know, D DNA gets, um, gets uh, condensed and then it becomes chromosomes and these chromosomes line up in the mitotic plate, whatever, and then they separate into do to the daughter cells. So we involve some DNA here. So this is good. Translation. There are, in translation, you need RNA. You need a ribosome. There's no thymine in RNA. Okay. Conjugation. This involves between, this is like about those bacteria cells and how they kind of make recombinant DNA with their sex pili. They have like the donor and, and the female and the recipient, all that going on. So this is, has nothing to do with this. And um, this has nothing to do with it. This is all about bacteria. So process elimination, guys. And B makes sense. So we're going to go with mitosis, okay? At the end of the video, I'm going to see whether um, what I chose was right or wrong. I do this live for you guys, completely live. Okay, notice how confident I am in answering. Studies show that macular communicants are common but not found in tissues such as the gallbladder and skeletal muscle. One possible explanation for this could be that these organs are not under autonomic nervous control. They are, okay? The gallbladder is under autonomic nervous control, okay? Specifically the parasympathetic nervous system, really. And the skeletal muscle is under voluntary control, all right? It's your somatic muscle here. So the gallbladder is autonomic, but the skeletal muscle is not. Therefore, this is wrong, okay? These organs are not involved in digestion of materials. They're telling me that they're not involved in digestion of materials. Gallbladder is, okay? The gallbladder secretes bile. We need that bile to emulsify fats. We need that to digest fats, okay? It is involved. It's exactly involved, all right? Remember, there's a difference between digestion and absorption. There's a big difference between that, guys. C, not involved in secretion of materials. Yes, the gallbladder is involved in secreting bile, so this is wrong. Okay, and the process elimination. Answer is D, and also D makes sense because they're not involved in absorption. They're involved, this is involved in digestion, but not absorption. Okay, there's a difference. Absorption is when we get that, um, get those amino acids, get those glucose, whatever that's in our small intestine, and we pass it through the villi into the bloodstream. That's absorption. We're absorbing it into the blood, okay? Skeletal muscle does not involve an absorption. Gallbladder does not involve an absorption. Therefore, the answer is D, and I'm very confident that this is my answer, okay? I am confident in my answer choices. I ax out. I go, boom, not right. Boom, not right. Boom, not right. Boom, this one's right. That's how I do it. Okay, and that's how you guys have to think. That shows confidence. Okay, the MCAT wants you to be confident. All right. In patients with a certain medical condition, the intercellular path described in the passage is damaged in the large intestine, causing lower levels of transport. What change would be expected? All right. In this transport, we were told that it uh, transports chlorine out to the luminal layer, and then water follows it. Okay, so this is damaged. We're not going to have chlorine in the lumen. Okay, and we're not going to have water in the lumen. All right. So increased Cl minus in the lumen of the colon. This is wrong. 
okay? We're, we're damaged, okay? We can't put that chlorine in a lumen. This is telling us that we're not damaged, but in the question, we are damaged. D, decrease chlorine in the lumen of the duodenum. Okay, why are they, why are they talking about duodenum? Okay, <laughs> they're asking us about the large intestine. So the answer involves the large intestine, okay? Sounds like common sense, but I know a lot of you guys began some silly mistakes wrong, okay? And that's probably why you get silly mistakes wrong, okay? Look at what the question's asking. Large intestine, we don't care about the duodenum. That's way before digestion. And the digestive pathway, all right? Duodenum's in the small intestine. And then it goes duodenum, uh, jejunum, and then ileum, and then large intestine, okay? Decrease waste fluidity in the colon, okay? If we don't have chlorine in the lumen, we're not going to have water follow it. So we're going to have a lower amount of water here in the lumen. The large intestine, all right, it's made up of a cecum, colon, and rectum, okay? The colon is after the cecum. So if we don't have water in the lumen, we're not going to have water in the colon. So we're going to have a decreased amount of water there. So answer is C. D, increase, no. We're not going to have an increased waste fluidity in the colon. We're going to have a decrease. All right, I'm very confident in my answers. It's simple. It's easy, guys. Does it seem easy? Yeah, it is easy. Okay, you want it to be easy. All right. Which molecule is least likely to be able to travel via the macula communicans pathway? Okay. So the whole macula communicans, that's what we just described here. All right, this was the whole entire thing going on here. This is the whole pathway. Okay. So... Insulin, I don't see why insulin would go here, okay? Insulin is a peptide hormone. Why would it be in the digestive system like that? Why? <laughs> I don't see why. All right, so I'm going to go with A, but let's keep going. C, L minus, this would be able to travel. We're pumping it into the lumen. All right, that's what the whole thing's about. CL would be likely to be there. Sodium. Again, look, you see this arrow here? It would be likely. Also, it tells us that cations, um, where is it? Cations and water will trail the chloride. So sodium is a cation, so that's more that's likely to go there. Lysine as well is positive. I don't see why amino acids would be in the large intestine, but this would still be likely to be in the lumen. Okay. It would likely to travel because it's a cation. It's positively charged. So insulin. Makes sense. That's the answer choice. I'm confident in my answer. No second guessing. The muscle of the dual layered system describing the passages. Okay, they told us those smooth muscle. I also remember that from my content review. All right, and smooth muscle. This is content review here. Smooth muscle is not striated. Skeletal muscle is striated. The heart muscle is also striated as well. Okay, so this is wrong. Multinucleated. Okay, smooth muscle is uninucleated all right has one nucleus regulated by the parasympathetic nervous system that is correct okay smooth muscle is regulated by the parasympathetic it's under autonomous control okay it's not voluntary all right try like you don't move your blood vessels you don't contract your smooth muscle on those digestive you know small intestine large intestine whenever you want you don't have that control all right, so it's parasympathetic, it's autonomous. Somatic is voluntary, okay? Like I just said, it's not voluntary. Therefore, the answer is C. But bam, that's how we do it, guys. That's how we do it. You know what? We'll do this one too. We'll do this one too, guys. Which of the following is most likely to use a protein channel to cross the eukaryotic cell membrane? Okay, that's easy. <laughs> All right. This is a steroid hormone. This will easily diffuse through the cell membrane. This would diffuse, this would diffuse, these are gases, okay, something that's charged will need a protein channel, therefore the answer is B, calcium, guys. All right, if you guys are interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, guys, I will make sure you hit your target score no matter what. I'll hold your hand, tell you exactly when to study, the whole schedule, how to study. If you guys are interested in that, okay, go to the comment section and schedule an interview, okay? I will interview you to see if we're capable of working with each other, and if it seems like we're a good fit, I will invite you to MCAT University. We're going to hit your target score. All right, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.